Hello, uh, welcome to this session on Open Education Champions. Uh, OE Champions is a chance to talk to important OE advocates and actors, which is why we are talking to uh, you, uh, Ebba Ossie Nielsen, uh, as an OE Champion today. Uh, the intent is for students, teachers, pedagogues, and practitioners of open education like yourself uh, to discuss the importance of open education and to share experiences with facilitating the creation of more OER to inspire others to do the same and underlying the role of librarians in this possible. Uh, so my name is Chris Mean. Uh, I'm an academic skills librarian at NUI Galway Library in Ireland. And I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Ebba Ossia Nielsen uh, from the ICDE OER Advocacy Committee. Uh, thanks very much for talking to us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, first off, uh, can you tell us a bit about your work with OER uh, or open pedagogy more broadly? Uh, how did you come to be involved in open education? Well, it is a rather long, I have a rather long story on that. Uh, actually, I was getting involved already in 2002 at the UNESCO conference. Also when the uh, OER was, uh, was coined, the, the concept and the, the, the purpose of it was kind at the UNESCO conference. And also at that time, I was working with um, uh, European projects. Mm. And we uh, picked up on the, because we, we thought it was a good idea to work, uh, to build our project on OER. So uh, what we did at that time was with geographical information system and we built um, modules from two minutes to two hours, to two weeks, up to a full master wow. on OER. And we had that project for um, four, five years, I think it was. So at that time, I really um, uh, came very deep into the area of, um, of open edu education, and uh, especially OER, and also about the microlearning, because it was OER and microlearning is very close together. Hmm. So, um, also after that i got a lot of um, promotion and a lot of um, assignments uh, because it was a rather early stage and there were not so many people working on it right <laughs> so that was how uh, how i started very good um and uh, have librarians supported you on your open education journey whether at the beginning or the middle or more currently um that is a very nice question, but unfortunately, I have to say no. Okay. But on yes. the other hand, I, uh, I myself always promote the work by librarians and uh, what they are doing, because I think, uh, especially nowadays, um, librarians and have the, not the main responsibility because we are many stakeholders within the area, but um, librarians have so much knowledge about um, I mean, the background and how to, to search for sources and this kind of thing. So they are really important. And I always promote uh, librarians and uh, the role of the library. But um, unfortunately, not so much, much myself. I have been a more lifelong learner and looking for things myself. <laughs> OK. Well, it sounds like there will hopefully be some opportunities in the future. <laughs> um, who would you say has uh, benefited from open education at your at, at your institution as well as beyond your institution? And what would you say um, have been the key benefits? Uh, as I said, I started to work with um, open education on OER uh, already in 2002. And at that time I worked at the Lund University mm -hmm. in Sweden. And uh, of course uh, uh, the learners benefit from it. And uh, what I should maybe say, say as well about uh, this development was to work as a European project and all the material were translated into um, uh, all the partner languages. Mm. So of course uh, the learners and the students, but now when I'm working more uh, at the policy and strategy level, uh, at the international and national level, um, I, um, I will take the broader perspective because uh, the work of open education and OER is to benefit um, all the people. To, and then um, it is also said by UNESCO that um, the only way to uh, provide qualified uh, educational resources is to work with open education and, um, and OER. Uh, otherwise, uh, if all the people out there in the world should um, have access to qualified education, you have to build one university a day, and that is not possible, neither, neither desirable. And also, as um, I will stress that um, 
uh, uh, OER is not the goal as, say, as per se because it is belongs to the to the um, SDGs, especially SDG four, the Sustainability Development Goals, education right. for all, and all those uh, pillars with about equity, equality, life of learning, quality, inclusiveness, accessibility, etc. And it's also already stated by UNESCO, the United Nations, that education is a human right. Right. And it's about social justice. So we'd rather take that perspective about social right and human and uh, human rights and qualified education for all. And then OER and open education is some kind of tool to achieve that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, you know, given those goals and, and, and you know, what's happened with, with, with OER so far, um, what would you see as um, key successes in the open education movement so far and starting from your own experience in it? Um, first of all, um, if we count back to the timeline, when, as it started already in 2002, and there had been so many conferences, so many declarations, so many commitments, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, in 2019, we got the OER recommendation adopted by all members. <clears throat> but still, it takes very long time to get it implemented. There's a lot of talk about it. But um, of course, there's a lot of actions as well, but maybe those actions are more like, you know, silos or it's happened there and there and it's very difficult to get an overview of what is really happening. Uh, actually, I'm myself now working, uh, at, as I said, at um, strategy and policy levels. So in one way, I have this kind of perspective, what is happening around the world. And also, I'm, as I'm sharing the ICD or our advocacy committee, and we have ambassadors from all regions of the world. So I have a rather good overview of what is happening around the world and also by my research what I'm doing. Um, but I think um, the way has been very long and um, sometimes I'm wondering why because uh, for open science and open access the pathways has been so much quicker. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so education is still some kind of um, um, one man task, so to say, at many universities. Right. But, uh, working on open education and working with OER, you really need to work together and to collaborate and to teamwork because there are so many perspectives of it, uh -huh. about learning design, about pedagogy, about the subject, etc. So you need, really need to be a very comprehensive team. And um, at many universities, that has not um, happened or prioritized, <laughs> unfortunately. Sure. Well, that, that, I mean, that, that leads into the next question, um, I think, fairly well, which is what still needs to be done for um, open education to truly take hold? Um, uh, you said something about the most pressing challenges, but um, I suppose um, maybe you could articulate them again and what needs to be done to sort of overcome these. Yes, that is a very good and important question. So of course, there are many answers, that, answers to that. Um, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, there needs to be a lot of awareness raising still, although we have to uh, move from awareness raising to implementation and to implementation at scale. Right. And, uh, for, and as I said, also, there are so many stakeholders involved. Not, it's not just an issue for the, for the teachers or for the institution. It is uh, an issue for the society as such. We also have the whole area about um, museums, for example, and uh, I mean, a lot of other uh, sectors. So it's uh, actually not just about the, the educational sector. Um, so what is needed, I think it is, um, first of all, um, now when we got the OER recommendation by UNESCO um, for implementation, that is so broad and they involve those five areas about capacity building, about policies, about business models, about the internationalization at a very broad scale. We really have to look at that carefully. So many people think that OER is just an you know, open textbook or some kind of open resource which you can find on internet. Uh -huh. We also have to really be um, aware of because many people still think that uh, as they can find resources on internet, they think it is OER. Uh -huh. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. But we, but OER is the meaning of that is that you can uh, use the five R's uh, with revised, um, um, etc. coined by, by David Willey. 
-hmm. and retain and uh, 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 adapt. But uh, then there are maybe two more uh, R's, and that is about recognition. Right. You need to be recognized if you use uh, open education resources and work with open education because that is a priority, should be a priority. Mm -hmm. And you should also be recognized, uh, recognized if you are uh, using it, uh, using by others and uh, develop things from others. So that is one part. And the other uh, is about recontextualizing because uh, maybe there is a, some kind of material which is useful, but you need to adapt it to your own context and your own culture in your own country. So I will argue for those, those um, more two hours. Um, and uh, I will also maybe say that we need to stop just to produce the material because we really need to build on what is done already. And then there is a lot of other things, uh, both at the macro level, uh, I mean, at national level or international level. In the, at the international level, we now have the recommendation, but then we need to be um, incentives at national level and of course the uh, institutions and of course um, departments or what, whoever is working on it. Um, and there need to be, um, yeah, there need to be incentives for that. And there needs to be um, time because this can't, can't be done just on top of everything else. Sure. And then I think it's important also to work on um, monitoring and evaluation. So we okay. really see what are the benefits, and that means that there is need for a changed uh, or redefined quality agenda. What is quality when it comes to learning? And that again, both for the individual, but also for the society, so to say, in both short term and long term. Um, but uh, to start, uh, to start with, I mean, those are very broad things, so to say. But maybe to start with is to ask yourself. What can you do? What can I do? Mm. Can my organization do? Yeah, sure. And not just they blame the government or blame someone else that nothing is done, but really go into yourself. What can I do? And that is why I like myself to work as an advocate. I like to work and do with the ICD or our advocacy committee because uh, then we can make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, this uh, leads into the next question very well, uh, which is amidst all of those things that need to be done, uh, of course, um, uh, as, 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 as one person, what are, what are your plans for the future with, with open education? Um, well, thank you for that uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, um, I think it is very important and also next week, starting on Monday, we are having the ICD uh, word conference uh, online, and it is very much focused on um, open education and OER, of course, as we have that in our strategy. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I myself, we're to the ICD OER Advocacy Committee, together with my ambassadors, we will host um, a workshop on open okay. education, open education resources, and open science, and how that is linked together, um, because that is. Um, that is my dream and my plans for the future to, I mean, really see the ecosystem. Mm. Because we can't just talk about uh, open education resources or open science or whatever it is. But we need to see how all those open movements are working together and also are uh, nourishing each other or maybe sometimes even hindering each other. Mm. Uh, so with this uh, workshop, we are aiming for to have some kind of white paper and uh, maybe you know that, that there would come uh, an OER recommendation also about open science it was discussed in May by UNESCO and it will hopefully come now in, in November okay so to bring all those open movements uh, together because then real uh, open education can be um, uh, be scaled up and can be um, a reality and can benefit uh, each and every one for the best uh, for human rights and uh, social justice. And also, I mean, it is important also to stress that <clears throat> why is this important? Because it is, it is important because what is paid by tax money should go back to the taxpayers. Uh -huh. Sure. And another ambition I have is we need also to move the, the discussion on OER and open education uh, outside the learning, the educational uh, institutions to the society, as I mentioned, the museums, for example, or even other kind of organizations, because we need to meet the people where they are. 
and also to merge the, the formal learning and the informal learning. Um, that is also important because OER play a role for the informal uh, and non-formal learning. Okay. If people can um, um, people can uh, can learn by themselves and the self-regulated learning and also for the lifelong learning perspective it is important because not everyone would like to go into you know an educational uh, institution or to do a course but they would like to learn because they have a burning interest in their subject yes that's the reason why it is important to have free um, uh, qualified um, materials available to all the people so I think that is very important to to move out to the society and to the people. Okay, um, that's great. Uh, perfect. So um, lots of plans. Clearly, um, uh, I also uh, had a plan, and as you see, my background in my my wall here in Zoom, I work yes. with the UNESCO Futures of Education, learning to become. Right. And that is a, that is a really um, a different perspective because it is time to stop to offer things from the universities, for example, or for the uh, education institutions. It is really time to change perspective and ask what are needed by the learners, what are needed in the society, and how can educational uh, sector um, provide or support or work together with that. Um, and that is also why open education and open education resources are so important because we need to take the stance by the learners, what are their needs. And that's why I was arguing for to move outside the institutions with open education and OER. Sure, um, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Um, well, is, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add? Uh, anything you feel you, you, you've missed in this discussion so far that uh, you want to share with people? <laughs> Uh, yes, maybe one thing, and that is um, don't wait till someone else is doing something. You can start yourself where you are, and as I said earlier, ask yourself what you can do to move forward, because everyone can do something. Maybe not everyone can do everything, but all of us can do something, and together we can be the stronger and build the open community. Perfect. Okay. Thanks very much. Well, um, um, uh, thanks again for, for being here. Uh, for thanks this, for having uh, me. Yeah, great conversation. And uh, we really look forward to sharing your thoughts with the, uh, with the open education community. Thank you so much. Thank you.